welcome to another wargame review from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander. And I'm Grant. And today we're taking a look at a fairly large game. Uh, it's a new, well, 2019 newish wargame from GMT, and it's Stalingrad 42. So this is, um, it's by uh, Mark Simonich. Simonich? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <gasps> However you want to say it. Yeah. I'm sure there's a right way. Yes, but... and please feel free to correct me. <laughs> <laughs> um... So this uses the same system as Holland 44, Ardennes 44, and Normandy 44. And Holland 44 we played about a year ago. Yeah, and there's Ukraine 43, I believe, as well. There is, yeah. So I they, think they all use the same or similar yeah, system. They use the same core system. Obviously, there's some nuances to, mm -hmm. to the different ones. So this is a big East Front game. Yeah. Uh, and as such, it is an East Front game. You yeah. know what that means when I say that, if you've played any East Front games, right? Initially, the Germans kind of kind of push this way, and then after a certain point, Russians are going to push this way. Uh, yeah, it's, right. It's just kind of a seesaw. That, that's how it is. Now, this is, this is only, um, I believe this is only 1942. So really, yeah. they're going to push down to Stalingrad, and you're going to get into the mire in Stalingrad. You're not really going to see that huge counterattack back um, mm -hmm. westward. So this is... Um, a simulation. I will yes, say. we we had a lot of discussion about that during the game. It's a simulation. Yeah. So and what we mean by that is the combat values and the setup. You know, is re repeating history. Yes. In, in essence. Yeah. You know, the German troops. There are fewer of them over the course of the game in an aggregate. But I didn't feel that. The, we played with the this scenario. introduction though. Yeah. yeah. Of the big campaign, there's more. And they have better values. They're better trained. They're battle hardened, having gone through Poland and the rest of Eastern Europe. And, and, and in most cases, to be honest, their combat values are almost doubled compared to the Soviet units. Yeah, or at least like a fifty percent better. Right, and their defensive values are about thirty to forty percent better. Yes. My average defensive value, I think, was three or four. Yours, I think, is a five. And I also felt like I had a lot of armor units, a lot of yes. tanks, a lot of assault guns, which give you column shifts in combat. Which makes a huge difference. Yes. So, as such, especially in some of these other scenarios, you know, you, you might feel, and it's the same with a lot of East Front games, one side just taking a butt whooping. Yes. It just You just feel like, I'm retreating, defending, retreating, defending, retreating, defending, and it's hard at times to make a counterattack or to do yeah. something effective, you're just like, I move my battle line backwards a little bit. So as, as such, there are other games which are you know much more engaging for both sides. Yeah. Just know that that's what this, this is. You, you're simulating history. Don't, you know. Well, as you mentioned, the important thing to remember is as the Soviets, you're not going to have a lot of opportunities for good counterattacks. When they come, you've got to take yeah, them. When they're there, you've got to jump on them. And you've also got to, in some way, set them up with your movement. Yes. you got to look at your units, and you got to keep some cohesion. And you've got to also keep you know, your, your tanks together with some good infantry. And you know, there's a lot of elements that you got to think about to play this game well. Yeah. So it's not just getting pushed back. It is looking for that maneuver opportunity and that counterattack. They're, they're few and far between. I think I had three or maybe four really good counterattacks, but they made a difference. You can see I, if you, when you show the board, I was able to kind of hold this center, and they're still there, which is yeah. crazy. Now to they're me. about to be out of supply, but yes. for this scenario, that didn't matter. Yeah, because we just did kind of the. the well, they're still in supply. They are right now, but there's could be. Yeah, you just got to move in. Yeah. in two, two or three turns, they're going to have to retreat, or they're going to be isolated. Yeah. So, so I don't want anyone to think the game is not fun or playable now. You asked me at the beginning of the game, you're like, are you sure you want to be the Russians? And I'm like, yeah. Because I'm, I'm not really, I don't care about winning. Yes. I want to learn. Now, I was pretty sour the first turn or two. One, you rolled really well. I rolled pretty well throughout most of this game. And, and two, I felt like every time you attacked me, you were almost three and four to one. Yes. And that's just, it's insurmountable. Even if you roll a one, you're still doing... At worst, you're retreating, which yeah, is which, very good for me. It's hard. So you just got to remember that. And you got to be aware of that, and you've got to plan once again key little counter counterattacks, and that's what you got to try to do. Yes. Now, with all that being said, a lot of that is general talk on East Front games as well. I don't know that we've played one that doesn't feel that way. No, and I don't know that they shouldn't feel that way. Right. That's it's what, what it is. Yep. Now, yeah, if they didn't, if it didn't play out that way, people would just be like, "Oh, it's a historical," and you might, okay, right? That's a valid complaint. Now. 
<clears throat> just stripping it down, I love this system. There's no doubt. It's so well done. Yes. It feels classic yep. to me because the system is not complex. No. It's, I do all my moves, I do all my combats, do some recovery and some bits and pieces. You yeah, do all your moves, me. all your combats, do some recovery stuff. So in yeah. that way, it's very, it's quite traditional in that way. Mm-hmm. But it's, I feel like it's a fairly clean system in the way mm-hmm. that it does things. The one thing that I really like, which is, um, I don't know if I've seen it as much in other games, if ever, is the, is the zone of control bonds. Yeah. A lot of games have, your unit has a zone of control and the six hexes mm-hmm. around them. This one has, if you're, if there's an intervening hex between you and another friendly unit, another friendly unit, you can effectively draw a red line between those, and it's it's like a, you know, barbed wire fence. If you, anyone tries you can't to cross it, it yep. it's a, it's illegal. Or if you're forced to retreat across that because you, you take reductions, you yep. are eliminated. eliminated. Or dead. Yeah. And so that that encourages you to create good lines of defense mm-hmm. and good mm-hmm. lines of offense, keeping a good structure. So there's some. I think there's value in that in an operational game to well, help teach you certain things yeah. as well. Well, and that's just it. That Zokban system really works well in this large scale of a game. Yes, yes. The oper- in a tactical, it wouldn't work. Yeah. But it, it works really well, and you've got to use it to plug those holes. Now, yeah. it's not a poison pill, meaning it's not going to stop everybody from getting through, but it does stop a lot of easy advances and, and, and easy victories by just outmaneuvering people. So I, I like that because it gives you an ex- It's almost like a, what's the word I'm looking for? A safety net. It's like a safety net for you in some ways as the defender. Well, and the other nice thing that it does from a functional standpoint is it reduces the need for having as many counters on the board. Yeah. Like any other East Front game that's this size. Would have had double the counters. Two or three times the counters yeah. because you've got then two or three layers deep of units yep. and you have to have a unit in every hex. Yeah. It, what it does is it reduces the clutter on the board. There's still a lot of counters in this mm-hmm. one. But not anywhere near yeah. what it probably should be to rep- represent this full front at this scale. <laughs> yeah, other games at this scale would have triple their yeah. counters. And, and I, I, that's one thing that's a huge draw to the system for me. Yeah. Because it's even with this, there were still some times where we were just knocking them over. It'd yeah. tweezers at times. Yep. Yeah. But uh, I, I like what that system... I like what it does. Yeah. I, I, I enjoy it a lot. The combat's clean. Mm-hmm. I got, I've got i got offensive value. You've got a defensive value. What's the odds? There's a couple shifts. Yeah. Not many. You roll. There's and... not a lot to take into, into consideration. It, it goes along quickly. And it uses a six-sider, which I, I know we've played a lot of big games like Empire of the Sun, and it has a ten-sider. Yes. So it has a wider range of possibilities on that... CRT. Yes. This it's just a six sider, so it yeah. it makes for some interesting challenges, and I think really makes the rolls count a little more. Maybe I'm wrong in saying that, no, but I, it, it feels like that. Yeah. If a roll doesn't go your way, it can hurt. It can really hurt. Yes. So I like that six sider. I think the CRT is very interesting. We did talk about the fact that almost every result, yeah, has a DR, which is defender retreats. So this is the CRT, and I'll show you a little bit closer. Basically, all of these values, which is easily 80% of the board, 85%, 85, 85% yeah. causes the defender to retreat. This is a yeah. game where you, gotta push. you will not get stuck in the mud yeah. if you're attacking with any kind of good opportunities, yeah. which I think makes for a good East Front game in that way. Yeah. You, there is a lot of movement, a lot. Every yeah. time you attack, someone's going to move somewhere. Well, and, and it's also interesting because they have the follow-up attack mechanic. Yes. So when you beat a unit and it has to retreat two or three spaces, you can you all kind of came together in one hex, and then you can decide your couple of units that are going to chase that unit down. Yep. And was is it a max for like the different types? So like your tanks can move three. So based on which advanced result, result you get, advanced two, any unit can take care of that. You can move two yep. hexes and do an attack. For these ones, you can get like an advanced four. You can use your armor and mech units. They can just move run. four hexes. So you can, you get that breakthrough yep. combat as part of as a result of the CRT. You can move and do another attack, and then you basically uh, yeah. used up. But it, it's it's neat how they build. 
east front stuff into the CRT. Oh yeah, it's not this whole extra rule set particularly. Yeah, it it, it actually is seamlessly done where yeah. it's almost it's almost abstracted in the way this is put together. You don't have to think about that. Yeah. So so that breakthrough combat that is really the attacker is gonna. And mostly the Germans. I don't know that I ever did it more than... I think I did it one time. But one time you chased me, like... How many... You did two or three follow-up attacks. And the really cool thing about that is when you become disrupted, which is one of the results of yes. the... Then I'm, my, my uh, defense values get halved. So then you can do you do the follow-up attack on him, and then it's very easy to yeah. inflict a lot of losses. Him. Or then to put them into full retreat. Yep. Which means they're just like running they're, away. They're done for at least two rounds yeah. until they. So, so that's a very interesting thing that to me tells you how you're going to play this game. As the Germans, you've got to be attacking, attacking, attacking. Yeah. And I think that's something we talked about. You felt a couple of times those one to one odds, you didn't even want to risk it. And my comment to you was even look at the one to one yeah. odd table. How yeah. many of those are defender retreat? It's 50 One, two. Okay, so it's only 50 50. But that's not bad. But that's not bad. Yeah. So you've got to, as the attacker, even those one to ones, you've got to be pushing. And I that. feel like maybe, you know, maybe I should have done that. That would have made a difference. It probably would have made a difference of you being this much further in the game. I guess that's. And then you would have taken some of those. But that's the difference between me and the actual German high command. Who were pushing and. They, yeah. they were. Uh, did the offensive early yep. and doing all this stuff, and they were ragtag by the time they ran the east. And I'm like, I'm oh, no, I'm not that guy. Yeah, and it's I, I'm too slow and didn't achieve the historic course in any way, shape, or form. Well, it, once again, it just kind of tells you how you got to be playing this game. Yeah, so it to be successful, be aware of that. I think when you're playing this at home, be aware of that. You've got to get on your horse and you got to ride that thing until it's foaming. Yeah, you know, the, the other thing that I I kind of complained about as we were talking about were the retreats. Because I felt like it did not matter what I did, I was going to be retreating every single time. Yes. So, so the way that I felt like I combated that was I kept those combined arm stacks. You know, most of the Soviet tanks are the, what are those called, free stacking units? Yeah, they're the little free stacking So you tanks. can have like two large infantry units or a large tank unit and an infantry and then a free stacking tank unit. I felt like I tried to get a good combination of those to make it so you're only two or three to one. I didn't do a good job of that. So what I'm saying is, if you don't like that defend or that retreat rule, man, you got to get your stacks right. You've got to get them combined right. And it tells you where to put them up together. You, you know, the setup, it, it doesn't give you a lot of option about where you put units. Yeah. So it's, it's very interesting in that respect. I, I don't know. I, I actually had a really good time once we got past round two. No, I know. I, yeah, I know exactly. Once the initial punch me in the face got done, I was like, okay, let's do this. I was able to do some nice little moves here. I think we had a good time doing it. Yes. And it's a very enjoyable game. I think this is a great game. It's a great system. Yeah, I, I, I like it a lot. What it I'll is do is system. I'll show you the board, go through a couple of the different rules, because uh, there's a lot, uh, and then we'll wrap up with a few final thoughts. So here's a look at at least a portion of the map. You can see here, it's an east front game. Um... So you, you have kind of what you would expect with the kind of battle lines. You have these kind of tan units of the Russians here, and you've got the Germans, Lithuanians, Hungarians, and Italians down here kind of forming this line, pushing this way. So the game is, it's an I go you style game. So the Axis player is going to go first. They do some kind of initial stuff where they get replacement points, put their reinforcements in one of these reinforcement boxes, and, and do a little bit of admin. And then they simply move every single one of their units that they want to. And after they've done all their moves, they do all their combats. And movement is based on uh, the movement value of the units here. So you've got these units. They have three values on them. You have the six and the three on the left are the attack values. In the middle, seven and the five are the defensive values. And the three and the three on the right those are the movement allowance. So these are infantry units that can move three spaces. I think they were down here ish, who knows? So, literally on their turn, they move three spaces. One, two, three. Real simple. What you can do is you can use extended movement. Extended movement adds three to your movement value. However, if you use extended movement, you cannot end um, effectively adjacent to an enemy unit. 
But if you wanted to do a big advance, one, two, three, four. You basically have to stop here because you can't enter any of these spaces. So that would get you one extra movement point. Or if you needed to kind of slip down here, and you kind of go one, two, three, four, five, six. You, you can move decently if you need to. The other option for movement is you have a limited number of um, these train tokens. And especially, it, it, mostly it's for your reinforcements coming on the board. You can stick them on a train and they can go all along these rail lines all the way up until you get to one of your rail heads and you have to stop here or anywhere before that. That's for the Germans. The Russians can kind of go as far as they want. So when you get into the late game or if you're the Russians, you can train all the way down here or you can go kind of go all the way across a whole map section to get there. But you, don't see, you do that and you sit in a train and the next turn you can get out and do any, any move in combat. You can't jump off the train and start shooting, that's not allowed. But that's movement. Movement's really simple. So you, you're kind of moving up, trying to engage enemy units, trying to get as many kind of guns on target as possible. Moving up. These guys are kind of already engaged here. Move some guys up. It's moving all your lines very, very simply. If, you, if you're kind of in a bind or the terrain's pretty messy, you can always use what's called tactical movement, where you can just move two hexes. One, two. Um, if you want to cross one of these big rivers, these major rivers, so you have, we have the River Don, and then the Volga is on the other map. If you want to cross any of these rivers, you have to start next to it, and it basically costs three movement points to cross it. For a lot of units, that's all of their movement. It's just a huge river. That, you know, it takes time to build bridges and use pontoons and things like that to, to kind of get across and move everyone over, logistically speaking. So they can move a couple extra spaces. But that's movement. Movement's very, very simple. And then you get into combat, and combat is um, very familiar uh, with a lot of games that you've played. So let's take this stack here. We have two Russian units. We have a five defensive value and a five defensive value. These are um, two large uh, infantry divisions. And let's pit them against, let's see, let's pit them against something fun. Um, sh sh this could be ugly, let's do it. So let's say we've got these German, we've got two German armor units and we have um, a mech unit as well. So our attack values, we have a four and a three, seven, plus this seven is 14. We have 14 on a 10. So 14 on a 10 is actually one to one odds. Well, that's not great. But because we have armor units, which are these, they're armor units, right? But this one has a black dot, this one has a red dot, and the red dot supersedes the black dot. A red dot means it's an elite armor unit, which means they're very, very strong, powerful tanks. This is your you know, Panzer IVs and your Panthers, things like that. I guess it's 42, they didn't have Panthers back then. But uh, these are your really strong tanks. And as such, they provide you column shifts. So we were at one-to-one -one odds. If you look here on the chart, we have our one-to-one -one odds, which is not great. So this gives us two column shifts. So we're going to go two-to-one, three-to-one. We're going to roll on this chart. The other option I have is, if I have any of these ASUs, this little kind of yellow unit here, this artillery, artillery support unit, if he's within range, he's got a little five range up here in this little circle. Let's say we're attacking over here, one, two, three, four, where we're in range, you can flip him over, he gives us another column shift. So we went from one to one, tank shift, elite tank shift, then we're gonna get, let's say, uh, an artillery shift. And if we're really desperate, if we really want this attack to go well, you can commit one of your two Luftwaffe counters to give you another shift. <laughs> so you could, you know, if you commit all your resources, you can get up here very, very easily. So then you just chuck a d6, and you roll a four on your five to one table, and that puts you down here, d1. So defender loses one step, and when the defender loses one step on a d1 result, they're also gonna retreat three spaces. So they're gonna, you know, say we're over here, they're gonna retreat one, two, three, and they become disrupted. One, two, three. So let's say we were here, we attacked here, great. Now, what you can see here, we rolled, we have advance three. So what that means is, is that my units can advance three hexes. 
because I'm all mechanized units, I can take advantage of that. If I was infantry units, even though I rolled advance three, they can only advance up to two. They're just, they're walking this low. So these guys are gonna advance one, two, three, and they can, they can do a, a breakthrough attack. So they're gonna do breakthrough combat. They're gonna attack these guys again. Because they're disrupted, their values are halved. So we have eight total, so we're gonna go down to a, we're down to a four. So you can see this attacking and then doing the breakthrough combat, you will start smashing units, and, and uh, it, it causes some real headaches here. So we are still at 14, so we're now at 14 on a 4, so now we're 3 to 1. Now with breakthrough combat, you can't use Luftwaffe even if you have them, and you can't use artillery even if you have them. You're just you're rushing so far ahead of all that. So we're just a natural 3 to 1, now we roll a 5. So that's going to put A1, D1, and we get to advance two, which we ignore. So, we both take one step loss, which isn't great, if, I, if I'm honest. So we're gonna take this um, mech unit, is gonna take a step loss, and we are going to give them the step loss remnant counter instead. And these guys are gonna take a step loss, and they're gonna retreat two spaces, one, two, and then, instead of being disrupted, because they were forced to retreat again, they're now in full retreat. Which means, any unit who moves next to them, will immediately, they'll move back two spaces. And then at the end of the Soviet turn, they'll go from full retreat to disrupted. So it takes them a lot longer to get back into the fight now we've done that. We've taken a lot of good ground, and we've basically taken this unit, the stack of units, out of action. But that's combat. That was one combat, you'll do more and more and more and more and more. So doing doing the combat going up in our lives can can take a little bit, especially early game. We've got a lot of combats to do. Um, once things start getting a bit more spread out, you know you, you might not do as many, but that it's it's real simple like that. Um, instead of retreating, if you have uh, if it's past turn eight where it says not one step back, there's a rule that says you can do a determined defense. Before that, before turn 8, only these NKVD units can do it. But uh, instead of taking a retreat, you can opt to roll on your, um, on your uh, determined defense table. So instead of moving back, what I could have done is I could have said, well, we're in the clear, so I can roll a D6, and I can accept this result. Which means I might, I might not have to actually retreat. If you desperately don't want to give up ground, to keep your lines intact, or it's a victory hex, you might attempt a, a, uh, a determined defense, but it's, it can be a crapshoot, so a four would be a fail, so I would have to retreat and accept the, the retreat results. Um, if, I, if I get something like a one or a two, I have to accept those, but take an additional loss. If I succeed, um, I might succeed and take a loss, I might succeed and we each take a loss. If you start doing that in... Uh, in cities, it's much easier to be successful, or at least partially successful. So th there's a lot to consider, even uh, as you're the passive defensive player. Uh, but that's that's a lot of what this core game is. Germans trying to push this way, take these little victory hexes that have the red numbers in them, and, and achieve their objectives. And, and the Russians are trying to kind of keep a good defensive line, counterattack where they can, encircle German units who are maybe advanced to too far, get them out of supply, then do a counterattack and crush those units, um, and just build defenses and, um, you know, keep the motherland free of the German invaders. So that's kind of a look at the board. What we'll do is we'll wrap up with a few final thoughts. So that was a look at the map and, and just some of the bits and pieces. Um, I know we've, we've talked about this. I really enjoy this system. Yes. I, I mean, I've got Arden 44 at home, I've got Normandy 44, we just haven't played them. But oh, I, and we loved Holland 44. It we loved that very, game. Very, very good. But the, I like it because it feels so much like a war game. Yes. <laughs> and I know that's kind of... Sounds silly. Kind of thing. But, but it's true. When we play these games, I feel like I played a war game. Yeah. Like, straight up, this is a hardcore hex encounter game. There's supply rules, they're not complex, but they yeah. have them. That You know, it's attack values, defense values, there's a CRT, it's odd based, you took a die. Um, you know, there's artillery, there's Luftwaffe support units. 
I feel like I played a war game. Mm -hmm. There's some war games we play where it's like, oh, it's this yeah. experimental thing, or mm -hmm. it's this different kind of a hybrid. This every time I'm like, yeah, I've played a war game. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. And, and it's a very, it's just, to me, that's a satisfying feeling. Yeah, like it's a, it's just a very traditional type of game, um, but it, but it doesn't feel old or mm -hmm. like bogged down. I, it's such a clean system. I could play it yeah. in, in any theater, basically. Yeah. A couple of things that I, you know, you're, you're gushing over it. I feel like I am as well. There's a couple of things that always bother me about this system. Really? One is the terrain effects for certain things like rivers. Okay. You uh, and I yeah. talked about that on multiple occasions. And I know it's the scale mm -hmm. that really makes that not yes. the way I want it to be. B because the reality is, if you tack across a river, the defender is doubled. Yes. More often than not. You're also halved... When attacking across, I think it's a bridge, a major river, a major river. But the way the and map is, bridge, yeah. the way the map is set up, it's very easy for you to move a unit across the river, and nullify that advantage because all units aren't attacking yes. across the river. Now, once again, I understand the concept. Yes, I'm not having to being able to take pot shots all at those same units. But my argument would be those units attacking across the river, whether whether they're the point of the spear or not. Are less effective and they should they should be have a penalty. That's the thing that I keep coming back to. Yeah, I know. And I'd saying. like to have a conversation with someone who knows a lot more about me than uh, about war games. Why that is? I'd love to talk to Mark about why that is. I I would like to understand that. So I th it's I think there's two reasons. One You're of, just making up one, bull crap. One reasons, of them but. is if I've got a division defending. And you've got a division coming across the river and a division coming in from down the road. Yeah. You've got to split your forces. I, I understand so that. Yep. Battalions here, couple battalions there, your forces are so But still, why does that union that division coming across the river get full attack value? That's what I don't understand. So because they're rowing boats the, <laughs> and they're keeping their heads down. I've watched a bridge too far. That was a really tough river crossing. Right, but again, this is a much larger scale than that. River I understand, crossing. and then and then the and that other may aspect, be the answer. The other aspect is, it would probably be impossible to actually play a game if you couldn't do that. It would probably it, it be potentially, so slow with how many yep. rivers there are. You just there wouldn't be a yep. game because you would just everything would be stuck on the rivers. Well, but I also feel that one of the key elements for the defense of the Soviets is those rivers. The major rivers, I would agree yeah. with that statement. Keeping you on the other bank and making sure you can't just attack with impunity yeah. or you had to move around me, mm -hmm. that was very key. And, and I felt like there were a couple times that you just, because of the rules, oh, you moved a guy around the yeah, river and it's like... a guy around, then it's... I, I don't know. Pins or attack. That feels... It just doesn't feel right to me. Tell me why I'm wrong. There's probably a good reason. But I understand your argument. Yeah, I do. I don't. And I don't know that it breaks the game because the game ended up just generally how I think it is going yeah, to I most just, of the time. It would be so static if if you uh, agree. It would just you wouldn't be able to do anything. Yeah. And that's I th partly I think that might be why it's just a game, right. a game thing. But the, the other thing I I really liked about the terrain, these fortified areas were cool. Yeah, they're neat. And I thought the minor city, I think is what it was called. Yeah. And the major cities. And the major the cities as well. Boy, holding those is really not easy, but it makes you have to work. Oh, yeah. I think my strength down in Rostov is a 20, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I don't know that you're ever going to get me out of there. No, and I think um, there's, gonna be tough. there's no tank shifts going in. Right, because either. it's so, you're going to be rolling yeah. two or three to one, maybe two to one at the most, and more often than not, one to one. Yeah. So that makes holding those really, really And that's hard. where you've you got to roll up the artillery, you got to use yep. the Luftwaffe, and you just got to... Yeah. But that takes a lot of time and logistics to get there. It does. So it's there's a lot to consider in, in playing this yeah. game as well. The other thing I always like about these games is the replacement points and the... What are the art, the other... So we, there's the resource points that resource get points. ASU's back. So we were able to flip our artillery guns back to being used, and I was able to, to build some, some fortifications, fortifications yeah. that gave me a column shift to the left. I really liked that element, thinking about, okay, where are you going to attack? How am I going to use that? That was another interesting element is the defender trying to think about managing that. Yeah. There were some things we didn't use. There were trucks that we didn't use. We used a lot of rail movement. There's yeah. a lot of elements to this yeah. design. You like had air power, and I had rail heads that I moved up. That looks yep. neat. But yeah, in in the in the late game, you're going to use a lot more of those supply trucks because when, you're stretched when out. When the Germans are way too stretched, yeah. and there's you can you can 
if you've got an airfield nearby, you yeah. can kind of airdrop supply to guys yep. who are stuck in Stalingrad, yep. things like that. So there's just so much to this. The other thing we didn't really talk about was that desperate defense. Yes. A very interesting element for the defender to decide with certain types of units, do I make my stand here? Because I don't want you blitzing across the map. And, and I like that. The one, Who are the units that could use that? Uh, the, early game, it's the NKVD who can right. do it. But late game, it's also the guard units. It's, it's everyone can do it uh, okay. after turn eight. They just get the bonuses. They just get the bonus yeah. time. So I, I, that's another good element that kind of wraps itself around the zones of control and the Zoc bonds and the just really masterfully done. Yeah, if I don't want to have my lines broken, I can sit here and attempt a desperate yeah. defense. It's a die roll. And the die roll, if I succeed, it's a crap I don't retreat. Yeah. If I fail, I'm still going to retreat. And you can take but, more losses. Yeah, there's there's yeah. losses in a lot of the different options that come from but, those. But I think roles. more often than not, my decision revolved around whether I used it was, I didn't want you running across the map. Yes. also didn't want you chasing me down. So I, I like that element. Another great element of this game that's put in. But it's also makes it fun. very simple. It's yeah. one little chart. And yeah. it, you know, it, it, it's just cool. There's a yeah. lot I like about this game. This game is going to be on my top 10. I just don't know where it's going to be. Right. And it's going to be on my top 10 because the system is just that good. Yes. Period. And I know that a lot of you guys love East Front games. Yeah. So I think this is going to be a big win for a lot of people out there. East Front's not necessarily my favorite to do. Right. Because there is a, there is a lot of script. And there's a lot of script in every war game. But I feel like he's fun. Yeah. There's just something about it. Yeah. But the, the system is undeniably a good system. It's I, not too complex for, no. for newer people. You shouldn't be scared off by this no. if you haven't played a lot of war and, games. And it's interesting. The first system we played, the first game in the system was Holland 44. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, oh, crap, I'm, I'm worried to death about it. But we read the rule book. I watched a couple videos. We sat down. We played it. Yep. And it came to us very easily. And frankly, coming back to this was easy. It's nothing. It's because nothing. we knew that. And I think the rule the rule book itself... Like 15 pages? It, it's more than that. It's, it's about 30 pages. But so a lot of that is... At the end, there's a couple advanced rules if you want to. It's on campaign stuff. So it's really 26 pages of rules. It's not a lot. No, but they give it's you a, a playbook as well to yep. show you examples of everything. Yeah. So if you are new, read the rule book. Read yeah. through the playbook. Yeah. And and you'll pick this up in no time. It's it, This is a... Whilst it is a big game and it, it is, you know, a pretty decent war game, mm -hmm. like rules wise, it's a real war. It's not, game. it's not super light or anything, but it's yeah. not inaccessible by any stretch of no. the imagination. This should not scare you away from playing it. Don't let it scare you away. Don't, yeah, don't see the four maps and be like, yeah. oh no, this now, is a one map scenario. We we did the one map scenario. You can I play would, all four maps. You can, and, and I but, we don't have table space to do right. it, frankly. But all it, all it does is take up space and time. Yeah. The rules don't get more complex They're or anything not more like that. Complex at all. You just, it's just, just more. And frankly, Holland Forty Four had the whole element of the airborne drops. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Which were so awesome, but you don't have that here. So that some of that complexity even even is gone. But yeah, it's still got different elements of chrome. Here you've got like the yeah. railheads yep. and stuff like that. And the, but it's a great system. It is. It, this no is, doubt. It's Stalingrad. It's an East Front game. Yeah. So I know that a lot of you guys are going to enjoy this. I just every time we play this system. I have a good time with it. Well, why haven't we played Norman for, Normandy 44 and Ardennes 44? It's a time, what are we it's a doing? Time, it's a time. Okay, I know, you're right. I know. So I will say this. <laughs> I know that Simonich is already working on the next really? oh, I'm sure volume. Why would you not? Salerno 43. Really? Now, I'm sure it has some chrome and some different elements. It always but do. It looks, the map, I've seen the map already. It looks pretty dope. Well, I, I so, look forward to that, too. I, my guess is that's probably late this year or early next year, but hasn't even been put on the P500. Okay, so that, that's so probably it's, it, that's it's, 2021. It's probably 2020. That's at least 2021, then. But don't let this scare you away. I think you need to get a copy of this. Yeah. I think you need to play this system. And there's four or five versions of this system that you can... You know, Crane 43, which we haven't played. That's another one. Yeah. Get one of these that interest you and play it. That's what you got to do. Do it. Yes. Jump in. You will not regret it. And I think you'll be a convert to the system and want to play all of them kind of like we do. And the one thing I like about this it is a two-inch box. I yeah. have a counter it tray fits. and two bags, and everything fits in that box. Because the maps aren't mounted. Yep. You know, if the maps were mounted, and I'm okay with these huge maps not being mounted. Yeah. When, when there's four maps, you can't mount them. Yeah, we, we have Plexi. 
I mean, mounted maps would be this much in the box, yeah, right? That, yeah. That's that's ludicrous. So paper maps are okay. These are really nice paper maps. Yes. Holland Forty Four was just like this. Well, and so, when I but like when I see an East Front game, I'm like, ah, oh, crap, it's not going to fit back in the box. Right. Everything fits in this there fits. nicely. I've got it all organized. And it's just well. a two-inch box. Two. So, so that that's just bravo. Yes. An accomplishment. Yes. I, an I achievement of the most that highest that it's able to go back yeah. in the box and yeah. be organized at the same time. So yeah. this is Stalingrad Forty Two. Fun game, excellent system. Check it out if you're interested. Uh, it's available on the GMT website. Not, if, not even if you're... Just do it. This is a game you got to play. you got to play this system. You have to play this system. Don't, I agree with don't that. Don't worry statement. about being interested. Just get into it. Just try it. But you can play so good. any of the games in this you system. You can. There's five or six of them. None of, of them. None of them are outrageously complex. No. No. It, but it's such a clean system. This just yeah. happens to be the East Front version. So it's yep. really, really fun. Had a good time with it. I did too. So I appreciate you guys tuning in. I'm Alexander from theplayersaid.com. And I'm Grant.